This is part three for revenue recognition, and we're going to cover multiple performance obligations and standalone pricing. So let's first of all take a look at a couple examples, and we'll see how that's done. So in this example, we have a studio that will allow you to buy a membership for $700 that includes a voucher for a 25% off yoga classes for one year. A new membership normally sells for $720 and a one-year enrollment in yoga classes sells for an additional $500. We're estimating that 40% of the vouchers will be redeemed and in addition, Mike offers a 10% discount on all one-year enrollments regardless as part of their normal promotion. How will the revenue be recognized? First, we're going to look at the rules. First, we have to identify the contract with the customer. And what we have is a contract to provide gym services and a discount on yoga classes. Second, we're going to identify the performance obligations. In this case, we have two. There is the gym membership and the discount on the yoga classes. Next, we're going to determine the transaction price, which is $700. Then we're going to allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation based on fair market value. And we have uh, the normal gym membership and the value of the discount for the yoga classes. And then we can recognize when the performance obligations are done. So we'll go back to our problem. What information do we need? We need the 700, the 25% off of the classes, the 720, the normal cost of the yoga classes, how many people we think will actually use the coupons and then we also have to take into consideration that there's normally a 10 percent discount on yoga classes which means that would reduce our 25 percent so we're really just getting a 15 percent discount because this is unusual to this offer now we're going to determine the standalone price of the two performance obligations we have the one-year gym membership at 720 and the one-year yoga, its approximate value is $75, but we're assuming only 40% will redeem them, so that has a value of 30. So the total standalone fair market value of what's being offered is $750. Now we're going to have to allocate that to the $700, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the 720 and we're going to divide by the total of 750 and that gives us 96% and we're going to take that times the $700 that they're at, we're actually going to receive. And then we're going to value the yoga coupon which is based on $30 divided by the total of 750 fair market value is going to give us $28 and that's how we're going to allocate the 700 what does our journal look like for 10 new memberships? It would be cash, 10 times 700. Deferred revenue, membership fees. Oh, sorry. And deferred revenue, yoga coupon. So the membership revenue will be allocated over time. And the ter deferred revenue, yoga coupon, will be recognized when the coupon is exercised. Now... Step four, allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations based on fair market value. What if the performance obligations are not sold separately? Well, there are three methods to estimate if you have the information. You can use the adjusted market assessment approach. You estimate what it would sell for in the open market based on other companies that provide the same service. The expected cost plus margin approach estimate the cost and then add a profit margin or the residual approach subtract the known selling price of the performance obligations from the total now remember we're only going to use this if we have inform this information if we don't have this information the price is allocated to the um, the total price is allocated at based on the longest 
performance period. So if they buy a piece of equipment plus a service contract and you don't have a separate price for the service contract, then you would allocate the total price over the life of the service contract. So now let's take a look at an example. We have uh, a full set of uh, golf clubs are offered at $1,500 and similar with a fitting, complementary fitting. Now, these services, the fitting is normally offered by other vendors for $110. Mike generally charges a 10% more than other vendors with similar services. Mike sells the set without the fittings for $1,400. It normally costs $60 for the fitting service and they normally charge 30% over cost. What is the standalone pricing of the fitting service based on using our three different methods? First, what does it look like when we use standalone selling price of the fitting service? Well, we're going to use the market assessment. So we're, we charge 10% over others. So we're going to take 110 plus 10% times 110 tells us our standalone price is going to be $121. So when we record the revenue, we're going to have $1379 is going to go for the golf clubs and the $121 is going to be when they get the fittings. Now same problem, but what if we used expected cost plus margin approach? We would take the $60 plus the 30% markup, and that would give us $78. And so we would record revenue of $14.22 at the time of the sale and $78 when they get the fitting. Now our last approach. We're going to use residual approach. This is the easiest. What we're going to do is we know a full set costs $1,500 and our golf clubs cost $1,400. So we subtract the two, and that tells us our standalone price for the fittings is $100. So we would assign $1,400 at the time of the sale for the golf clubs and $100 when they get the fitting. And that concludes this part.